Hey everyone, my name is Anuj. I'm a second year medical student at GMC Nagpur. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I try to provide you solid content about medical school and stuff related to it, and also some educational videos. My point of this video is I hope that you gain something at the end of it, and if you like it, kindly subscribe and hit that like button. Coming to today's topic, that is the blood supply of the entire GIT. So basically, the blood supply is uh, based on the embryological origin of the different uh, tubes. So actually the entire GIT it is divided into three parts the foregut, the midgut and the hindgut. So the foregut is the foremost part of the GIT. It is basically the lower end of the esophagus, the stomach and the duodenum. So now not the entire mm -hmm. duodenum is derived from the first part. So the duodenum up to the opening of the hepatopancreatic ampulla in the second part of the duodenum uh, it is called as the foregut. So from the esophagus, the lower esophagus to the opening of the hepatopancreatic ampulla, it is known as foregut. From that point itself to the right two thirds of the transverse colon. So basically that includes the other part of the duodenum, then the entire jejunum, the ileum, the cecum, appendix, the ascending colon, the transverse colon. So the transverse colon not exactly, but the right two thirds of the transverse colon is actually uh, what consists of the midgut. Now the hindgut is the part from that part to the ending. Now the hindgut is the part from that point in the right two-thirds of the transverse colon to the ending of the upper part of the rectum. So that includes the left one-third of the transverse colon, the descending colon, the sigmoid colon and the uh, upper part of the rectum. So according to this, we have three arteries, the foregut artery, the midgut artery and the hindgut artery. So the foregut artery, all of these arteries are actually the branches of the abdominal descending aorta. So the foregut artery is known as the celiac trunk, the midgut artery, it is known as the superior mesenteric artery and the hindgut artery, it is known as the inferior mesenteric artery. Now the celiac trunk will obviously, as it is in foregut artery, it will supply the foregut that is esophagus, lower part of the esophagus, the stomach and other upper part of the duodenum. The midgut artery will supply the entire of the midgut that is stuff derived from the lowermost uh, part of the pancreas, the jejunum, the ileum, the part of the duodenum, then the cecum, the appendix and the uh, ascending colon and the right two thirds of the transverse colon. And obviously the hindgut artery, the inferior mesenteric artery, will end up supplying the left one third of the transverse colon, the descending colon and the upper part of the rectum and the sigmoid colon. Okay, so first of all coming to the foregut artery or the celiac trunk. The celiac trunk is actually a very short pedicel from the abdominal aorta which arises at near about T12 or uh, at, at about T12 level of the, thora uh, of the thoracic vertebra and it is a very small peduncle and from it Come, there comes three arteries. So the foregut artery has three main branches. The first one is the left gastric artery. The left gastric artery will supply the major part of the uh, smaller curvature of the stomach. So that was all about your left gastric artery. The next big artery that comes from your uh, celiac trunk is known as the splenic artery. So the splenic artery is a big artery and it is very torturous in its course. That means it has a very a lot of number of twists and turns the splenic artery has. Now what will happen is that the splenic artery will actually pass behind the stomach, behind this bed of the stomach and reach the spleen. So the main, the main part, the, the main part which the splenic artery will supply is the spleen. But on its course to the spleen, it also gives out various branches. So these mm -hmm. branches will actually cause uh, the blood supply to different organs. So obviously since it's the foregut artery, it will supply the stomach. So it supplies the stomach by a couple of methods. So first of them is that one of the major branches of the splenic artery are known as short gastric arteries. The short gastric arteries are basically supplying the upper part of the fundus and the greater curvature of the stomach. Now the splenic artery will also give something called as the left gastro omental or the left gastro epiploic artery. So that is nothing but it, it is an artery which is derived from the splenic artery and it will end up supplying the greater curvature of the stomach along with the omentum or what we call as the apron which is present uh, right in front of the GIT. The splenic artery also is the major blood supply to the pancreas. It gives out the bigger pancreatico pancreatic arteries and the artery to the tail of the pancreas. 
coming to the third branch of the celiac trunk that is the common hepatic artery so now the common hepatic artery is nothing but the last branch of the celiac trunk it is as its name suggests major part it will go to the liver but along with that it also supplies various other parts in accordance to it so the common hepatic artery first in its course it gives out the first branch that is the right gastric artery now remember the left gastric artery was the direct part of the celiac trunk but the right gastric artery is a branch of the common hepatic artery now as it gives that branch uh, it gets smaller so now that smaller branch will give out basically one artery which is big enough so that artery which is a branch of the common hepatic artery after it has given the right gastric artery it is known as the gastro duodenal artery so as its name suggests it's going to supply the stomach as well as the duodenum so now the gastro duodenal artery as it goes down in front of like the pylorus of the stomach so what it does is basically divides into two parts so now the first part is known as the gastro omental artery now remember we had a gastro omental artery uh, earlier from the splenic artery that was the left gastro omental artery now this is the right gastro omental artery so the right gastro omental artery is actually the branch of your gastro duodenal artery and the remaining branch of the gastro duodenal artery is known as the superior pancreatico duodenal artery i know it may sound a bit confusing but stick with me now the hepatic artery which was originally uh, going out so now that artery is known as the proper hepatic artery now the proper hepatic artery divides and uh, it, it is divided into two parts the right and the left hepatic artery the right hepatic artery ends up supplying the gall bladder and the right lobe of the liver the left artery supplies the majority of the left side of the liver so that was about the foregut artery okay so as i was saying that this is the foregut artery now the foregut artery will give three branches that is first is the left gastric artery which will supply the greater curva lesser curvature of the stomach so there is the left gastric artery second is this big artery known as the splenic artery the splenic artery is trying to go into the spleen here there should be a spleen it gives you can see short gastric arteries right here and it will also give something called as the left gastro omental artery so that was all about the splenic artery the most complicated artery we have here is the hepatic artery so this is the common hepatic artery first of all it gives the right gastric artery here then it will give a peduncle known as the gastro duodenal artery so the gastro duodenal artery actually goes and divides into two parts one and two so the second part here it is known as the right gastro epiploic artery like we had here the left gastro epiploic and the anastomose here and this part this is known as the superior pancreatico duodenal artery we'll see soon here that so there is something also called as the inferior pancreatico duodenal and there is something called as superior pancreatico duodenal and finally the common artery becomes the proper hepatic artery and the proper hepatic artery is about the right and left branch so the right one will supply the gallbladder right right lobe of the liver and the left one will supply the left lobe of the liver summarizing the celiac trunk uh, has got three branches the left gastric artery then the splenic artery which supplies the spleen and gives out a branch known as the left gastroepiploic artery and then also the short gastric arteries this uh, then there is the we have got common hepatic artery now common hepatic artery will give out something called as the right uh, the right gastric artery that it will give out also the pancreat uh, the pancreatico duodenal artery as a branch of the gastro duodenal artery and then also the hepatic arteries itself coming to the second part that is we have got the midgut so now the midgut is from again the papilla of waiter to the right two thirds of the transverse colon so what we have is basically the superior mesenteric artery now superior mesenteric artery arises at the level of l1 and it is also a content in the transpyloric plane so the superior mesenteric artery basically also has about five or four or five branches so first of all if you remember we had superior pancreatico duodenal artery as a branch of the gastro duodenal artery and the pancreatico duodenal artery now we have the inferior pancreatico duodenal artery which is actually the branch of nothing but the superior mesenteric artery so that is the one of its branch it will go go ahead and supply the part of the duodenum which is in the midgut and also the pancreas which was not supplied by the splenic artery now also this artery uh, the superior mesenteric artery has a lot of branches since the midgut the major part of the midgut is the intestines the small intestines so the small intestines we have jejunum and ileum in the small intestine we have jejunum and ileum so the small intestine it is supplied by uh, the 
superior mesenteric artery. The superior mesenteric artery will give out a branch that will supply the ilium and the jejunum. So these are jejunal and iliar branches of the superior mesenteric artery. Then it will give out one major branch known as the iliocolic artery. Now the iliocolic artery is special because it will supply a part of the small intestine as well as a part of the large intestine. So the iliocolic artery will supply the terminal ilium. It will also supply the cecum, the appendix. Now, another artery which comes from this is the right colic artery. So the right colic artery will supply the ascending colon and then the middle colic artery will supply the right two-thirds of the transverse colon. That was all about the middle, art middle artery, that is the superior mesenteric artery. To this part of the diagram, we have here the intestine drawn very nicely so first of all we have this small intestine and then we have the entire colon labeled from up to down so first of all we can see that around here now this should be t12 and this should be l1 so around l1 we have this artery known as the superior mesenteric artery now the superior mesenteric artery is going down like this as it is going down the first branch it is give, giving here it is known as the inferior pancreatic or urinal artery as it passes down here, it also gives jejunal arteries and the ileal arteries. From here you can see there is something called as the iliocolic artery which is coming out. So now the iliocolic artery as its name suggests will supply the ileum, the cecum and the appendix. Okay. So now the ilia iliocolic artery was that. There is a right colic artery. The right colic artery will supply the colon from here to here. After that we have the middle colic artery which will supply the right two thirds of the transverse colon. Now, quickly revising, the superior mesenteric artery has five branches. First of them is inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery. Second is the jejunal artery, ileal artery, iliocolic artery, middle colic, and then we have uh, the right colic artery. Coming to the hindgut, so the hindgut is basically divided into from the left mm -hmm. one third of the transverse colon to the superior part of the rectum. So, in accordance to that, we have the artery known as the inferior mesenteric artery, which arises at about L3 and L4. So that inferior mesenteric artery has basically got three types of branches. The first branch here will be obviously the left, left colic artery because we had the right, the middle and the left. So the left colic artery it is the branch of the inferior mesenteric artery. Now the left colic artery will end up supplying the left one third of the middle, uh, the transverse colon, the descending colon. <coughs> And now there's something called as the sigmoid arteries. So sigmoid arteries are direct branches from the inferior mesenteric artery, which will go about and supply mm -hmm. the sigmoid colon. And the last artery of this entire thing is known as the superior rectal artery. Superior rectal artery will supply the upper part of the rectum. Similarly, we have the inferior uh, me mesenteric artery right over here. So the inferior mesenteric artery will, as you can see from its major branch, the left colic artery is supplying so much part of the descending colon. Now as the descending colon continues into the sigmoid colon, we have sigmoidal arteries over here which will give the branches to the sigmoid colon. And finally, we have the superior rectal artery which is nothing but the blood supply of the upper part of the rectum. So that was all about the blood supply of the GIT. I hope this vid video helps you out. And the basic objective of making all of this is so that you get a little more better at your regular lives than usual. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed, Please just press that subscribe button. I am sure that you will enjoy this. Thank you. Whereas it will also supply 